Welcome to Key Biscayne National Park. I've already used bug spray and sunscreen today, so I'm sure it's gonna be wonderful. If it's your first time here, my name is Laura, and I'm headed to every national park. Oh, he went under and you cannot see him at all. Hope you're ready for a road trip because we're starting out today on the Atlantic coast at Key Biscayne National Park and ending at Everglades over on the Gulf of Mexico. Now, 95% of this park is underwater. I'm here today to check into the visitor center and explore the 5% that is above water. So buckle up because we have two parks in one day. Excellent stop here at the visitor center. This year, most of the visitor centers are closed, but they had the theater with different movies about Biscayne Bay and their museum, which had such good like representations of the coral and fish that are underwater. I am gonna take this short trail out to enjoy the actual bay, and then I'm gonna move on to Everglades. I did ask if there's anywhere that I should stop and he recommended a fruit stand in Florida City on the way to the Everglades and that's 100% where I'm going for lunch. Popular activities at this game bay include kayaking, stand up paddleboard and snorkeling. I'm not doing any of those. If you're really into it, you can also do scuba diving here. There's like six shipwrecks that are in the area that scuba divers just love going to. For me, this walk is perfect. I did ask in the visitor center how many people they see a day. Right now it's the off season and it's a weekday. So he said probably around 50 on a weekend, 100 or more. But if it was in season, it'd be a few hundred a day. If you're planning to really explore and get to know the place, plan your trip in the winter. He also mentioned that out of season starts in like February. It's May, it's hot, I can see why. For me, this is perfect to just be able to see it and know what it's like. I'm gonna jump in the car. It should be about 45 minutes before I'm in the Everglades and an hour and a half to the Flamingo Visitor Center, which is all the way on the Gulf Coast. Lucky for you, you're coming with me. Oh, sorry, buddy. I do not belong in Florida. This is insane. Sleeping in the van last night was so hot. I'm trying to get to the Everglades, but it's already noon. So I'm gonna be at the Everglades. It's noon, it's 91 degrees, and it's a little humid. When I was at the visitor center, the guy mentioned Roberts is here fruit stand. And I have to say that this is exactly why I asked the question. I asked him if there's anywhere I need to go while I go to Everglades. I thought he'd mentioned something in the park. He mentioned this place. I don't know if I would have known to stop if he hadn't mentioned it. Lucky for me, he also mentioned to get the key lime pie shake, which I'm headed in to check out right now. Although the shake was probably enough for lunch, I thought it wasn't quite on the nutrition scale. The one sandwich they had today was a Cuban, but I didn't know it would be so big. This was $9. For anyone who hasn't had one, a Cuban is a pressed sandwich with ham, pork, cheese, mustard, and pickle.
That is a good sandwich. I'm gonna wrap this up for later and get back on the road to the Everglades. We've officially made it to Everglades National Park. I have never been here before. I'm excited to see it. I don't naturally like reptiles, but I'm gonna do my best today to really capture the beauty of this park. Let's go check it out. switched to my hat and my tennis shoes so I'm ready to run away from anything there's a pond here and I am uncomfortable with how many things are jumping in it and I already see an alligator the ranger at the visitor center said that this is his favorite trail he also mentioned that if you're there after night the snakes come out so we're doing it before we get to the flamingo visitor center this is the first alligator of our trip and I'm 300 feet from the van I'm going to say he is four feet. But I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to ask these people. Oh, he went under and you cannot see him at all. I do think it's a big bonus that it's so hot out because I think they're mostly going to be in the water. just talked to another park ranger. He said that there's probably 70 or so gators that could be in this area, but they don't really track where and how many. So that's comforting. I've already seen a gator try and catch a fish. He missed and a, a bird successfully catch a fish, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Taking a break in the shade, getting a drink of water. The fish and turtles are totally my jam. This is what I think of when I think of the Everglades. And we're just getting started. There are vultures here in the Everglades that will pick apart your windshield wipers and any plastic on your van. So they do provide tarps. If you are anywhere where you see those, make sure that you use the tarps to cover up anything. I was watching a video where somebody had a surfboard on the top of their van demolished it. The vultures just picked it to pieces. I pulled over at Nine Mile Pond just to see it because there's a nice loop that you can drive through and I found the infamous vultures. So definitely recommend taking advantage of this if you see vultures where you're parking. Oh my gosh, just had such a good chat with the ranger. She was wonderful. She told me that I can see the manatees over here and the crocodiles over there. So today I'm going to hit the trifecta of the Everglades, seeing alligators, crocodiles, and manatees. This is the only place in the world where you can see alligators and crocodiles in the same body of water. I'm hoping just to see them all today. She said that there's a female crocodile over here that's waiting for her eggs to hatch and that there's two massive males that make their way around. Crazy. This is where the manatees should be. She said there's a freshwater leak and they hang out right here. What? Oh my goodness. That is crazy. 
crazy. What do you do when you're 20 feet from a crocodile? I have to be honest, I didn't expect to actually see manatees or crocodiles. I just knew this was the most likely place they'd be, but they're definitely here. That's crazy. Yeah. I changed my mind. I don't want to trust a doc. I don't know when there's a crocodile in the water. Next time. <laughs> How cool is that though? I'm going to take one last look at those manatees before I leave. It was so neat to see the crocodile and manatees that I had to stop back and thank the ranger. It is still 90 degrees, so I don't think there's gonna be many more alligators. Up next, I'm headed to the Overlook, and then that's my last stop in the Everglades. This is my last stop in the Everglades, and it's known for being an overlook of what it looked like originally. It looks so much like pictures of the Serengeti in Africa. There's also a storm coming in. I was really worried when I started the day today because I don't necessarily like snakes, but there are so many pretty things here to see. The alligators are beautiful cannot believe I got to see manatees and crocodiles, the turtles, the fish, even just the landscape. This has exceeded all of my expectations. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe because I'm officially headed up the east coast all the way to Maine. This is what it's like to travel with me. I am going down the road to try and find the biggest grasshoppers because there is no chance my dad is gonna believe that the grasshoppers are this big. He kind of just looks like a normal grasshopper. I'm gonna find a bigger one. You keep going, I'm gonna find your buddy. I found a big one earlier, but there was a car coming so I couldn't stop and look at it. But this is definitely the section, oh, I'm getting out. Okay, my blinkers are on. Jeez. Don't do it. Look how big he is. I think I got him with my hand next to it. Okay. No one's coming. Very safe. Oh, visor's up. Okay, lights off. Now I just have to dodge all of his buddies for the next 20 miles.